Welcome to Elephant Engineering Solutions YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to take a look at drawing roadway cross sections, how to make them look professional, and get it done efficiently. Okay, so I'm going to work on two examples. The first one is what I'm calling Road A here. The second example is what I'm calling Road B. I'm going to start out with Road A. First thing I want to do is make sure that my annotative scale is set to 20. I'm going to bring in the cross-section marker off the tool palette. The cross-sections are going to show up on sheet C 3.0 and road A will be section number one. I'm going to grab this guy and rotate it so it's perpendicular to the center line and then I'll stretch out the section marker. Okay, now I'm going to change my annotative scale to 10. If your section is more than 30 feet wide, you want to use a 10 scale. If it's less than 30 feet wide, you want to use a 5 scale. A roadway that's more than 30 feet wide at 5 scale is going to take up the entire page and look a little bit awkward. I'm going to go back to the tool palette and I'm going to bring in the detail title. This is going to be detail number one and it's going to be road A cross section and the scale is going to be one inch is equal to 10 feet. I'm going to set up my viewport so I have two windows. I can look at the road that I'm drawing and I can also look at the section view here. Okay, so I'm going to start out with the center line. The center line is just going to be simply a vertical line. Okay, so I'm going to offset the center line 55 feet. And this is going to be right of way. Okay, let's start working on this median here. The top face of curb is eight feet from the center line. And let's go ahead and grab our median curb block. Okay, so we're gonna place that top face of curb right at the eight foot mark. Now, I've gone in and adjusted this curb to match the city standard for a median curb. And the way that I do that is I click on this visibility grip and I go into customization mode. And what that allows me to do is I have a, a number of different stretch grips here. This particular median curb is eight inches high, six inches at the top, and it's got a two inch batter. And the depth from the bottom face of curb is 10 inches. Customization mode allows you to obviously make adjustments to your detail. Static mode, it turns off all of the stretch grips and you're limited. You can move it using this um, insertion point up here or you can move it using this grip point right here. And the other thing you can do is flip it. Okay, so let me put this curb back on the eight foot mark. The other thing that you're gonna notice is this curb is obviously stretched. It's exaggerated in the vertical by a factor of two. And this is good practice because if you're working on a 110 foot road like we're working on here, your curbs can tend to get very small and become almost invisible. So by exaggerating them by a factor of two, they tend to stand out a little bit better, become more readable. Okay, so now let's work on the median. I'm going to grab my asphalt section block and I'm going to insert it right at the bottom face of curb. Let's start working our way backwards from the right of way. So you can see from the right of way to the sidewalk, we have five feet. So I'm going to start offsetting some guidelines here. And the width of the sidewalk is five feet. And then from the inner edge of the sidewalk to the top face of curb is another five feet. Okay, so let's grab the curbing gutter. Let me flip this thing over and I'm going to grab it by the top face of curb and position it on this guideline. And just like the median curb, this curbing gutter has already been adjusted to match the city standards. So it's the same deal. I can go into the customization mode and I have all these stretch grips to adjust the shape of this curb and gutter. Okay, so we've located the curb and gutter, we've located the median curb, and we have our asphalt block. This asphalt block 
is already set at a 2%. So I want to maintain this slope. With this block, what you can do is you can grab it by the script and you can adjust it any way you like. But I'm going to keep it on this slope because this is already set at a 2%. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab it by the grip and I'm going to drag it to the intersection of that top line and this vertical line here. Now I can simply take the curb and gutter, grab it by the lip and move it down. So now the asphalt on this road is going to be three inches thick. Converting that to feet is going to be 0 0.25, but we want to double it. So I'm just simply going to draw a line and I'm going to offset this by 0.5. And now I'm going to take this asphalt and drag it down to the 0.5 mark. Now we're gonna work on the aggregate base. I'm gonna take this block, copy, paste. I'm gonna use this visibility grip to change it from AC to AB. Now the AB is eight inches thick. Translating that into feet, it's 0 0.67. I'm gonna multiply by two, so I'm gonna offset this line, 1.33. So now we have our AC at three inches thick. AB 8 inches thick. Let's move on to the sidewalk. I'm going to use the same block, the AC block. I'm going to flip it over and I want to use this 2% slope. Now we have a park strip between the back of the curb and the sidewalk. I want to trace a line over this block since it's already 2% and I'm going to copy and paste it over and trim it off. And I will take this AC block, copy it and paste it down and hit the visibility grip one more time and change it to concrete. Now the concrete sidewalk is four inches thick. Translating it to feet, that's 0.33. Double it, and we have 0.67. And we'll take this landscape slope and continue it up all the way to the right of way. Now last but not least, we have a CMU block wall on the right of way line. So I'm gonna take this stretch grip here. Um, we have a number of different sizes. We have four inches, six inches, eight inches, 10 inches, and 12 inches. This is going to be an eight inch thick CMU wall. I'm going to drag it up to represent a six foot tall wall. And I'm going to draw some guidelines here. I'll use the right of way guideline. So now the footing is going to extend six inches on either side of the block. So I'll take the stretch grip, drag it over. Take the stretch grip, drag it over, and the footing is going to be 8 inches thick. Double it, we're going to have 1.33. And drag this down. And I'm going to erase my guidelines here. Okay, so now we have all of our drawing elements. Let's start labeling this cross section. I'm going to use my standard leader style. Since the road is mirror image of itself on the other side, I'm going to basically take all of these elements and simply do a mirror about the center line. I'm going to take this right of way and copy it 110 feet over. Okay, so to clean up this clutter here, take the curb and gutter label and move it to the other side. Okay, and let's take this wall label and let's move this over to the other side as well. Okay, that's good. Now let's go ahead and dimension the roadway. Let me go ahead and use my standard dimension style with one place after the decimal. Okay, so I'm going to use the linear and I'm going to label to top face of curb. One thing I should mention is all of these annotation objects that I'm using are annotative. So when I go and I set my annotation scale to 10, it's going to size these annotations correctly for a 10 scale drawing. So when I brought in this title block, it knows that it should be scaled for a 10 scale drawing. When I brought in the leaders and the dimensions and the text, they all know that I'm working with a 10 scale drawing, so it knows to size them appropriately. 
Okay, so now I'm going to hit the continue button to continue these dimensions across the road. Now I want to add one more dimension, and that is going to show the overall road width. That's going to be from the center line to the right of way. Okay, so now I can take these dimensions and mirror them using the center line. Okay, excellent. I want to take the right of way with its guideline. I want to take the center line with its guideline in this right of way with this guideline. And I want to move them up a little bit. I want to see that thick line indicating the right of way center line and right of way. I want those features to stand out a little bit. And I'm going to take a horizontal line here and basically trim them off. Okay. And then the last little piece of annotation is we want to show the cross slope. So for example, for the pavement, I'm going to use my slope block here, snap it to the pavement surface and rotate it to match. This will be a 2%. And then I will simply flip it to make it point the right direction. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Let's rotate it. And I also want to show this on the sidewalk. We should probably put a 2% max on there. And let's take the 2% over to the other side. Okay, so I don't like the way that that text is interfering with the dimension line. So I'm going to take these dimension lines and drag them up a little bit. You know, I'm going to extend this section a little bit out. I'm going to show a little bit of the ground beyond the CMU block wall on both sides. The last thing that really improves the look of your cross sections is add the earth hatch to everything below the features you've just drawn in. Okay, and then the last thing we want to do is we want to take this section title, slide it on over, all the way over to the left hand side, and then I drag this line all the way across the section. Let's start working on the second cross section, the one for road B. I'm going to take the center line right of way, drag them down. So let's bring in the section marker. Okay, so same sheet. We're going to be on C 3.0 for the cross sections. And now this is detail number two. I am going to rotate this so it's perpendicular to the center line and drag it across so it spans the entire road width. We can just take this one, copy it, and paste it. This will be detail number two, and it's going to be road B cross section. And again, the scale is 1 to 10. What we have on this cross section, an existing roadway with existing pavement. And the plan, the design, is to saw cut the existing pavement and widen the existing road. We're going to put new asphalt to the right of this saw cut, curb and gutter, park strip, sidewalk. And this one will not have a wall, but it does have a PUE. Okay, so I'm going to copy this pavement section and put it right on the center line and drag it down. I'm going to use this as my guide for the existing pavement. I'm going to take the pavement block, move it out of the way. I'm going to change this layer to detail gray, and it's going to be a dashed line. Okay, I'm going to take this existing pavement surface, mirror it, and now I'm going to set up a guideline here. Let's go ahead and set the right of way. So we need to offset 39 feet. That's going to be our right of way. We'll leave that guideline in there. Okay, the next thing is the sidewalk. The sidewalk is five feet back from the right of way. PUE is going to be 10 feet wide. So I'm going to offset that. And I'm going to go ahead and copy this guy over. And I want to denote the PUE, just like I denoted the right of way center line. If you're not familiar with the term PUE, that stands for Public Utility Easement. Okay, let's start working off the center line. The cut line is going to be 9 feet from the center line. There's our cut line. We can go ahead and trim off the existing pavement. Now the top face of curb is going to be 
29 feet from the center line. So I'm going to take the asphalt, I'm going to move it and insert it at the edge of the existing roadway. Let's take the roadway and this is existing asphalt. And then we'll continue the existing ground beyond the roadway. We're just trying to give an idea of what's going on with the existing conditions. Okay, let's go up and use the same curb and gutter. So the top face of curb was at the 29 foot mark. I'm gonna take this guy and drag it down to the intersection of the pavement surface and the vertical face on the curb and gutter. And now I can take this pavement and drag it over to the lip. Now this is a somewhat smaller road, so the pavement does not have to be as thick. It's gonna be a two inch thick pavement. So we're exaggerating, translating that into feet. That's gonna be 0.17 times two is 0.33 and I will stretch the pavement to meet the 0.33 mark. Same story with the aggregate base. I'm gonna change this to AB. Now instead of the AB being eight inches like it was on the first cross section, this one is gonna be six inches, translated to feet is 0.5, times two is one, okay? So I'm going to offset this line one foot and drag it down. Let's copy the park strip slope label and concrete sidewalk. And we're going to paste these onto the back of the curb. Okay, we have a similar condition. We have a five foot park strip and a five foot sidewalk here. We'll just continue the ground from the back of the sidewalk and just drag this up past the PUE. Okay, same drill for dimensioning. And I'm done with these guidelines here. So I can get rid of those. And take the centerline right of way and PUE and drag them down a little bit so they're closer to the dimensions. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy this pavement slope down to the asphalt. Okay, so now the finishing touch is the earth hatch. Okay, so I'm gonna take the title block, line it up with the left-hand side of the section, and then drag it over. So the width of the title block matches the width of the section, and I'm gonna go ahead and line this up with the first section that we drew. Okay, let's see how we did. I'm gonna go ahead and print a PDF and let you take a look at it. So that's the end result. You can see these cross sections look very professional. They look very clean. And it didn't take a ton of time to get to this result. The blocks that you saw me use, you can purchase from my website. A link to the website is included in the description below. Thanks for watching and take care.